Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spud Knocker, as always, and welcome back to the F-18C Hornet. It's been a while since we've done a tutorial video on the F-18C, and welcome back to the Kuwaiti Air Force and Liwa Air Base here on the Persian Gulf map. Just a little PSA, the Persian Gulf map is now 50% off on the Eagle Dynamics web store, so make sure you head on over there and uh, pick it up. It's a fantastic map. It's definitely my favorite by a quite a long shot. And uh, today, in preparation for us getting the new targeting pods that are slated for release, hopefully sometime in the near future, for the F-A-18C, I thought we'd take a look at flying the aircraft with a very special loadout. And that is called the Double Ugly Loadout, with a two drop tanks, with one on the centerline number 5 station, and one on the inboard starboard side uh, station number 7. So... As we can see on the jet here, that's the loadout we have running at the moment. And as we come around the aircraft here, we can see that uh, we have the drop tank on the starboard side because normally the at-flare pod would be on the left-hand cheek station where that AMRAM is at the moment. Um, and that is so that we don't have a drop tank blocking the field of view from that targeting pod off to the left-hand side as we do a left-hand uh, orbit around a target area or something of that nature. Also, we can note that we have a 1,000 pound class weapon on our uh, inboard port side station, and that is to help offset the weight of a drop tank on the inboard starboard side. So keep that in mind. Um, right now we have a limitation in the fact that we don't have GBU-32s available in DCS for the Hornet just yet. So normally the way a, a real cast loadout would be would be um, two GBU-12s on a Brew-33 on the outboard on the starboard side, a GBU-32 on the inboard on the port side, a Maverick and LMAV. Right now we're carrying a AGM-65 Foxtrot, but uh, that works for our purposes here. They weigh the same. And uh, GBU-32 would probably be for, you know, taking down a big stationary target like a building with a bunch of insurgents running around inside shooting at coalition forces through, from that building. Got to bring down the building. And while the GBU-12s, the two, two GBU-12s on the starboard side would be more of a flexible weapon for uh, hitting, say, a moving vehicle, insurgents fleeing the area, or reinforcements coming in to join the engagement. And then having an LMAV is also a very flexible weapon, as it's a powered weapon. So it can be incredibly precise, say, uh, go through a window of a building, or hit a very small target in an area susceptible to collateral damage. So just keep that in mind that that's the way we, we would normally see a loadout on a Hornet uh, in the recent Middle Eastern wars over Syria, Iraq, and so on. So also keep in mind that you always want to have make sure you have a 1000 class weapon to offset that very big load of that drop tank on the starboard side. So let's go ahead and hop in the cockpit and get started with this uh, little tutorial. So here we are in the cockpit of our F-18, so why don't we go ahead and turn some lights on. Um, as you guys always like to know, I or I'll know by now, I like to fly with my cockpit with lots of lights on. Um, so what we'll go, I'll go ahead and do here is we'll set up our cockpit with a couple things. I'm going to bring my ADI up on my left hand DDI, and I'm going to switch it over from the standby, uh, being a mirror of our standby ADI down here. to mirroring the INS, what the INS believes to be our um, attitude, as well as bank and so on and so forth. So um, what's important here and why I brought the ADI up is we have a slip uh, indicator down here. We don't want to be slipping our way through the air with this very draggy uh, loadout on the right hand side and a much less draggy loadout on the left hand side. Um, and then let's go ahead and come over here to our FCS page. On our FCS page, we can see the incidences of our control surfaces in degrees. Right now, they are in a takeoff configuration with the takeoff uh, trim button pushed. And as we move our stick around, we can see the degrees there. We can even move our rudder pedals. We can see those changing. But as we recenter our stick and our rudder pedals, 
we see those guys come back to their original values. So we can do a little control wipe out again so you can see the control surface is moving. There they go, perfect. And so for calculating our trim for this rather strange loadout that is very aptly named the Double Ugly, um, we need to obviously put in quite a bit of left aileron trim or left wing down trim. Now there's different ways to calculate the uh, torque placed on the aircraft by this uh, strange loadout and uh, the foot pounds of that torque and a way of calculating it out and stuff. I just want to make it easy for you guys. If you guys want to dig into something like that, no problem, go for it. And I 100% encourage it. But for the, the simplicity of this video, let's go ahead and do what I have found to be the best settings for you guys. Now, this setting here that we're going to talk about is just for takeoff, whether you're taking off from an airbase here like Leva, or you're taking off from a carrier, uh, whether it be the Stennis or the new uh, Nimitz module that's coming out, that should be pretty cool. So what I've found to be the best thing is three degrees of left wing down trim. So I'm going to go ahead and start pushing my trim switch to the left. And I don't want to go too far past 27 degrees wing down here with the takeoff trim enabled. Um, so I'm just kind of gently pressing the button until right until I get to that 27 degree mark. As we can see, we have 33 degrees up over here on our right hand side. So um, this tends to be a very good spot to start off with your trim. Now, once we get off the ground and we start heading into different uh, angles of attack, which is the direction of airflow coming in towards the wing, as well as getting faster or subsequently getting slower as we fly through our flight, um, we'll have to retrim it out. Um, once we get our gear up, you know, clean the jet up, we'll have to retrim it out. And you're gonna be trimming your aircraft constantly, constantly, constantly over the entire flight due to this strange loadout. Now, do know that you can, of course, drop your drop tanks. Let's, so let's go ahead and review that really quickly here. So it would be center and right inner um, would be our drop tank stations. Of course, we can just uh, spin this guy right over to rack launcher. Uh, we would hit jettison there to eject those guys, but we don't want to get rid of them now. Um, so don't hesitate to get rid of them if you really need to. However, do keep in mind that squadrons only deploy with a set number of drop tanks. And uh, if you just drop in drop tanks all over the Persian Gulf map willy-nilly, your uh, commanding officer and especially your uh, weapons officer will not be very happy with you uh, and have to get some more drop tanks somewhere. So uh, we don't want to waste taxpayer dollars, but keep in mind that your jet is far more valuable than drop tanks. So just use your aeronautical decision making and make sure you are making the sound decision there when it comes to dropping your drop tanks. So I think we're almost ready to go. One more thing we want to do is I just want to put in, we'll turn on the light here and make it a little easier to see. I'm just going to put in just a smidge of left rudder. And as we come up off the ground, if we start to slip here, we may add a little bit more uh, rudder trim. Hopefully we don't need too much. If we do slip, we can see that this little square down here will start to slip left or right. We don't want to be crabbing our way through the air. We want to be staying as, you know, like an arrow. We want to be like a football through the air, like a jet. We don't want to be crabbing our way through the air. So keep that in mind. Also, you're going to want to make sure you keep your nose wheel steering left on uh, for your takeoff roll because that right side is so draggy. Uh, it's definitely going to want to pull you to the right for takeoff. Um, I guess the, really the best way to prepare for this is just to go ahead and do it. Or if you want, try some takeoffs uh, in some Warbirds so you get a feel of really dancing on your rudder pedals for takeoff. So uh, here we go. Hopefully I can give you guys a good demonstration here and not get in trouble. So let's go ahead and push the throttles up, punch it, and go for it. All right, already starting to come left. You can see that. So we're putting in left rudder already. You can see she really doesn't like this loadout. It's really a strain on the FCS. We're going to rotate, bring the jet off the ground, flaps up, gear up, oh, push the nose down. We really get a large ballooning effect because the FCS is just very, very under a huge workload. So bringing up the gear and... Uh, things it takes a lot 
So we can see, looking down at our slip indicator down there, we've got a lot going on down there. We want to try and hopefully dampen that out as much as we can. We got pretty fast, pretty quick there, so I didn't mean to get that fast, but that works for us. Uh, and I'm bringing, introducing right hand trim. As we get faster and faster, we kind of get into that stage of, you know, an object in motion wants to stay in motion. It doesn't want to be pulled left or right. It doesn't want to be pulled up or down. So at that point, we can kind of ease off on the massive amount of trim. And now I'm just kind of flying happy right now. I've got my hands off the throttle and stick. Let's go ahead and slow her down and increase the angle of attack on the wing and see what happens to our trim settings. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the throttle back. Let's go ahead and pop the speed brake. As we can see, we're already starting to tip over to the right there. And as we slow down, I'm just going to be bringing the nose up to stay on the horizon. Got that speed brake out, slowing us down. And as we slow down, our trim setting is actually surprising me here. We're staying pretty darn solid as we come down. We're starting to fall off to the right just a bit, so I'm just going to pump in just a little bit of a flick of left-hand trim. Yep, falling off to the right a little bit more. And I'm going to go ahead and cage our, our HUD. And we can see our stall warning there. We tend to stall pretty darn fast with this big heavy loadout in this tr very strange configuration. So I just popped into the afterburner and we're coming up. We need to readdress our trim once again. We're falling off to the right quite a bit there. The performance of the jet with this loadout is not bad. You just have to be able to really stay on top of the trim and make sure you can stay in good, nice, flat level flight. So that went really, really well. That was a very nice takeoff on my part. Um, probably the best one I've done with this loadout. So as we can see, that is just a crazy loadout there with that uh, drop tank on the Starboard Interstation Station 7. And that 1,000 pound class weapon on the inner port side station is really key. That really, really helps, helps you out. As well as the fact that we're carrying very, very nice streamlined weapons like those GBU-38s, that Maverick, and that GBU-16. Uh, if you had rocket pods out there on the right hand side, I think you'd be in some trouble. That is for sure. So let's go ahead and reset, and I will show you what this takeoff looks like without doing any of that rudder work and trim work. So let's go ahead and do it up. So we'll go ahead and choose a different slot. We'll come back to the airbase here at Liwa, just so that we can see the same takeoff, same situation, with uh, no trim added or anything like that. So I'm gonna bring the ADI up again so you guys can keep an eye on that and look at the slip because we're gonna be slipping quite a bit here with no trim or anything like that put in. So keep in mind that we need to trim it out, left wing down, just a hair, a smidge of uh, uh, left rudder trim. So we'll kick in some lights and away we go. Alright, I'm going to try and make this look good, but it's not going to go well. I already, you can see, I'm already just pulling to the left, or to the right, just, just crazy. We're going to rotate, and, yep, look at the slip, holy shit. Alright, and I'm dead. There's just really, once you get off the ground, if you're not really right on top of it, it will kill you and there is nothing you can do about it other than eject and so I don't like to see my runways littered with wreckage in multiplayer missions so make sure you guys are uh, definitely on top of that. So just for giggles why don't we go ahead and do that exact same thing but off of a carrier. As you know 
Marines and the Navy use this loadout constantly off of the carrier, or at least they did until the uh, Lot 20 or the F-18Cs were retired and taken off the decks for good. I don't know if any Marine Corps squadrons are going to be deploying the uh, Charlie Hornet on the carrier anymore, but somehow I kind of doubt it because that adds a lot of stress to the airframe and the Marines are going to want to maximize the lifetime of their Charlie Hornets just as much as possible. Alrighty, so what are we going to do? We're going to add three degrees left wing down of trim. I don't want to go anywhere past 27 here. So once I hit 27, I take my finger off the trim button. Or the trim switch on our stick here. Alright, so just a smidge of left rudder trim. And for giggles, why don't we go ahead and bring the ADI back up so you guys can see that side slip indicator there. We just reset our track IR. I wish we had a bit of a better lineup here. That's super, super key. If your lineup is bad on the cat, it's just going to really mess you up. Um, it's just going to probably break your jet and just throw you um, like a bad slingshot shot. <laughs> I guess it's just going to it's going to really rip you apart. So let's go ahead and give our salute and head on out. Yeehaw. Oh, there we go. And we can see it's just kind of a violent takeoff there. Making sure we get in a little bit of rudder. But once you get off the deck, it's pretty darn smooth. Um, that trim kicks in. And now we're just retrimming out as we get into different phases of flight and start flying faster. And the angle of attack changes up and all that good stuff. Not sure how we got that zoomed out, but it works. And we can see our beautiful double ugly load out there on our jet. Of course, because we're doing testing here, we have a VX-23 skin on the jet. And isn't that beautiful? If at any time you do feel overwhelmed by the trim and just need a bit of a rest, a reset, uh, feel free to simply just kick in the autopilot. The autopilot will fly the jet for you and give you time to relax, to think about what I need to do in terms of trimming out this crazy ridiculous loadout. So let's go ahead and just put the aircraft in a crazy um, trim position. So now we're just really rolling with no movement of the stick. So all we gotta do is if we get behind the jet or something of that nature, we'll just pop in some barometric altitude hold. We can do radar altitude hold, whatever. Just make sure you're not using attitude hold because that will hold you in the same attitude. We'll just bring the jet gently back over and there we go. She's flying straight and level. And then when you're ready, think about it for a second, just to kind of Visualize what you're going to need to do once you kick that autopilot off. Kick her off and re-trim her out. Just make sure you stay on top of it. If you got a center mounted stick, definitely don't be afraid to use two hands on the stick, maybe one hand on top of the stick, working the trim switch and your right hand uh, keeping the aircraft uh, from crashing or having a seat fit or a controlled uh, crash into the ground. So. You guys are probably thinking, well, Spud, this is just a nuts loadout. Is it, am I going to be able to, to defend myself against a fighter? Am I going to be able to have any kind of performance whatsoever? Like, what if I need to uh, dodge a man pad or a SAM shot at me over an Iranian airspace over there? So, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Alrighty. Choose slot. We'll choose a different slot again. And we got a nice MiG-21, or in this case, it'd be an Iranian F-7 air guard out there for us to play with. And uh, really quickly, I'm just going to trim her on out before we get into a dogfight here. So I'm going to trim her out as best as I possibly can. I'm going to be making constant updates to that trim as we fly into the merge. Get some things turned on real quick here. 
and we'll add just a smidge of that left hand rudder. Yep, yeah, <laughs> over trimmed her a little bit, so there we go. Okay, where is that bandit? She's out there, so. Or he's out there. Probably no female pilots in the Iranian Air Force. I think that's a safe bet. Uh, Alright, let's see. Already need to make some more trim adjustments. That's okay. I'm just not seeing this guy on radar. I didn't think I put him that far out. Alright, looks like we got a spike on our EW page. We'll make sure we get our countermeasures set. Alright. Alright, big 21 off our nose. Hmm. Not picking up on radar, but that's alright. There he is. Let's just flip on the labels here just to make it a little bit easier on myself. There he goes. Now, definitely don't expect to be a rock star in air combat with this loadout. But, uh, it's definitely enough to defend yourself that the FCS and the Hornet just can do some pretty amazing things. It'd be interesting to see how the F-15E that'll be coming out will deal with massive asymmetric air-to-ground loadouts without having a fly-by-wire system in it. I guess that's why those very far outer wing stations on F-15Es are not active. Alright, we got them now. Oh. He wants to get into his scissors, we won't let him. Pull him, chop him the throttles. There we go, we're just following him. We don't want to get... We don't want to overshoot him. We're just letting the Hornet magic do its thing. Alright. He tried. I'll give him that. Come on, come on. There we go. Splash 1, F7 air guard. Bye bye. <laughs> Perfect. So, as you guys can see, even with this just nutty loadout, you can really do some pretty amazing things in the Hornet with our double ugly loadout here. And, of course, we got to pay some homage to our Australian Hornet friends. So I hope you guys liked the video, and I hope you learned something, and I hope it helps prepare you for the upcoming targeting pods on the FV-18C. I definitely recommend practicing with this loadout on board your Hornet, as it is quite tough and definitely takes a little bit of practice to master flying with it. There used to be a really good video of a Hornet driver explaining how he approaches flying with this loadout. However, it seems to no longer be on YouTube. I don't know if it was deleted or taken down or you know what, but uh, definitely see if you can find something out there. And I hope this video helps you out. So please consider liking and subscribing. And fly safe, guys.